Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And today I'm giving brief thoughts on five different games from Steve Finn. Steve Finn, the Dr. Finn, the king of the filler. These are five, well, filler games. They're all going to be played in roughly 10 to 25 minutes or so in that range. Uh, possibly Biblio's taken a bit more on the longer end. And I'll go through just very brief thoughts on each of these from my least favorite to my favorite from there. And starting off with my least favorite, it's actually going to be two of these over here. We're going to have, and timestamps down below to any relevant section. This is just brief thoughts and overviews as, as far as these games go. We have the a little flower shop game over here, which this is a game of you of getting vases and trying to fill those vases with flowers. If you take a look over here, you're going to have different vases you're trying to gather across the course of the game. You're going to be drafting cards, both cash cards, both different, you know, hanging cards, as well as specific flower cards that you're trying to put into the vases. So you're trying to dra basically draft cards to get the flowers you need to fill the vases, while occasionally filling orders, and while trying to manage just a, a small brief drafting system. That's all it is. You're just drafting across a few rounds, trying to gather a few cards, trying to match things up. Uh, the game is light and simple. It does what it needs to do. It's not necessarily my go-to when I think of a drafting filler game. I think a game like Sushi Go would probably be more something in my alley in terms of when I'm thinking of where this game falls for me and what game I'd rather over. It's fine. It does the job. I have no complaints, but I also don't know if I'd necessarily pick it. Now we have My Little Flower Shop The Dice Game, which does the basically the exact same system, but it supplements a Yahtzee-style rolling system for the drafting of the game. In this game, same basic idea. You're going to have specific shops over here. You're going to have the different tar the sections of your shop. You're trying to get these things but instead of drafting cards, you are instead rolling dice and trying to assign them instead. I like it more. It does the same basic concept. Same basic concept as a play. You're still filling orders. You still have money cards. You still have dice. You're trying to figure out how to utilize them. I find the Yahtzee style rolling system gave a little bit more push to your luck, although possibly more a little bit of a first play advantage as players manage to achieve their rolls better because you have first access to what you want, although people go later, could get more money, so there is that trade-off. Overall, same basic concept as what uh, my sister's, as, 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 as what the little flower shop is doing, but in a smaller, cheaper price point with a slightly better system behind it, uh, at least for me. From there, we have uh, the Butterfly Garden. The Butterfly Garden is a game of trying to use your cards to gather the right butterflies to fill orders. So, same general idea as far as trying to gather things to fill orders, but uh, this time around, you're going to have specific butterflies over here. You're using your nuts to gather them, and then you're going to be placing them in order to be, place them in your jar, and you're going to be filling orders in the Butterfly Garden with them. Uh, the game all comes down to the timing aspect of taking the right things and trying to be managing your turn order so you can make sure you get the right th the next the next step over there. It does the job as far as giving you a slightly thinky puzzle. Again, all these games playable in around, you know, 15 to 25 minutes. Uh, this one gives you a slightly thinky puzzle as far as how to manage your turn order. If you've played a game like King Domino, then you'll know the same idea of sometimes you want that right thing, but other times it's more important to be in the spi space of a turn order because you want other things later. Overall, again, does the job, doesn't overly compel me as far as the game system. These are all a little lighter than what I'm personally looking for, which is where we move up to... Nanga Parat over here as the next one for me, and this is where you start moving into, I think, a little bit more interesting decision space. This one will come in closer to around 30 minutes, and the general idea of this game is you're trying to manage your own little system of hikers over here, you're trying to place them down to gather various animal types in order to be able to get those to cash them in for different abilities. There's an interesting mechanism in the game as far as how you move things around, how you try to get things, and how you trade in the various animals you're acquiring for abilities, whilst trying to be mindful of the points you have at the same time, because you can cash an animal for the ability, but still trade it in for the points, so you kind of want to make sure you're not holding things a little too long. The game, almost through the very nature of it, incentivizes it to use things because you have to eventually trade those in anyway. You may as well get the benefit along the way. Overall, this gives you a fun... This gives you the one of the thinkier systems from the ones on the table, and to that end, it was more compelling as far as what, as far as the design space, as far as the level of what gameplay that I'm looking for from something in this range. Uh, for me, the overall, I think the theme didn't necessarily pull me in, but the tactical abstract nature of it does do a good job. I almost wish it were differently presented necessarily. I guess the, overall, I think the, the thematic aspect of the game just didn't really do a good job pulling me in. The whole, between the name, between the theme, just doesn't do it for me. It is unique, which is a good thing, but the actual system as far as how you manipulate it, your, your people and you put them out there and how you try to take advantage of the abilities of the animals you're gathering, that gave you a fun little puzzle that was overall very enjoyable. Which means my last one on the table, which was my favorite, but is a drop fiddly. This is Biblios Quill and Parchment. Now, I've played the original Biblios. I have not had the original Biblios in quite some time. But I played the original Biblios, 
uh, I think originally it was called like Scribes and Quills or something like that, or Quills and Scribes. I don't remember the exact name, but it was called something else. And then it was made into Biblios, where I had a chance to play it then. And now it's Biblios, uh, Biblios Quill and Parchment. Uh, this one is a roll and write game. This is taking a roll and write, uh, roll and write game, dividing it into two rounds of play, in which you're trying to manage the the dice pool over here and trying to utilize. You're basically trying to earn influence, which you will then spend in the second half. So you're trying to be mindful of the two rounds of play while you try to gather spots in these various different sectors of the various uh, degrees of, of books, religion, philosophy, and all of that in the game. The game overall does the job, and there's an interesting system as far as the actual the chapel as well as trying to move up in the chapel and trying to get your mark in the chapel. Each player's going to have their own mark, you're trying to move up. It does a good job as far as being the most interesting, thinkiest game on the table, and it's a fun roll and write system. The one complaint I have against it is the game weight versus the fact that it divides it up into two rounds of play means you kind of have to learn two different mini games to play the single roll and write. So I would say the fiddliness to strategic depth aspect is a little bit more fiddly than I'd like, but once you get past that, this to me was the most interesting game on the table. I think Nanga Parat and Biblios Quill and uh, Parchment are the two ones that I enjoyed the most, while these three I think that they have a space as far as being filler games, but they're less my desired weight class and overall do the job, but without being particularly compelling. And that's basically it. These are the five five quick filler games from Dr. Finn. Yunaga Parat, Biblios Quill and Parchment. You know, we have the Little Flower Shop, Little Flower Shop Dice Game, and Butterfly Garden. In any case, and until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. Hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, I hope you have a good one.